In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this notification pop-up from scratch. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. I'm going to show you all the code from beginning to end. So first I'm going to begin by writing some HTML and then we will apply styling with CSS and then we will add the functionality with vanilla JavaScript. So to get started in my HTML so far, I just have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for the project. And beneath that I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to go inside of the body tags of the HTML. And first I'm going to create a button with an ID of delete and a class of button primary. I'm going to use the ID later on in the JavaScript and I'm going to use the class to style it. Within that button, I'm going to contain an SVG of an icon and the word delete. So I already picked out the SVG I want to use for the project. So I'm going to copy and paste this value into this button and then I'm going to add the word delete. So now we can see both the icon and the word delete are within that button. Next, I'm going to work on the notification. So when the user taps on this button, I want there to be a notification pop-up that will appear from the top of the page. So beneath this, I'm going to actually create that element. So beneath this, I'm going to create a div with an ID and class of notification. And again, I'm going to use the ID for the JavaScript and the class for the CSS styling. So within this div, I'm also going to place an SVG icon. So I'm going to add that element in. Then I'm also going to include a paragraph tag. And within it, I'm going to say that the item has been deleted. And then after that paragraph tag, I'm going to add an other button, but this one will have a class of button secondary and it's going to contain the word undo to allow the user to undo the action that they just completed. And then after this, I'm going to have a close button, which will allow the user to dismiss the notification. So here I'm going to add a div with an ID of close and a class of notification close. And within that div container, I'm going to add the other SVG of the close icon. So this icon and this word represents the delete button and these elements will be combined to create the notification pop-up. So all of these elements live in this higher container of notification. And so I'm going to apply styling for this element so that way it looks a little bit clearer. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually jump inside of my CSS to start applying styling. Now I like to add SCSS as a preprocessor here which allows me to be really organized with my CSS code. So I like to add that preprocessor to my project by clicking on this little gear icon. So first I'm going to declare some color variables that I want to use for this project. So I copied and pasted those values in, and then I'm going to add some basic styling that I add to every project. I just like to set the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero universally. So once I have this basic styling declared, I can apply specific styling for this project. So beneath this, I'm going to refer to the body. And first for the body, I'm going to reference the font family that I defined in the header of the HTML. I'm going to set the height of this to 100% of the viewport height. And I'm going to set the display of this to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And beneath that, I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. And I'm also going to set the text color for the project to a dark gray. Next, I'm going to apply a style to the buttons of this project. So I'm going to refer to the button element. And first, I'm just going to set the font family to inherit and specify the font size as one REM. I'm also going to set the border to none and the cursor to pointer. So that way it's clear that it's interactive. Next, I'm going to apply a specific style for the primary button style and then the secondary button style. So here I'm going to refer to the class of button primary and I'm going to set the background color to the primary color. I'm going to set the border radius to the radius variable 
and I'm going to set it to a display of flex and then justify the content and align the items within the center. I'm also going to add a gap of 0.5 REM. I'm going to specify the color to be a lighter gray and I'm going to add some padding of 0.5 REM. Then within that button primary, I also have this SVG. So I'm going to set the width of it to one REM and the fill to a light gray. Next, I'm going to work on the secondary button style. So here I'm going to reference the class of button secondary. I'm going to set the background color to transparent with a font weight set to bold. And then I'm going to set the color of it to the primary color. So now we can see that updated treatment here. Next, I'm going to style the notification. So for this notification, I'm going to set the position of it to absolute because I want full control over its placement on the page. I'm going to set the left position to 50% and then a transform of the translate X to negative 50% which will correct it, that way it will definitely be in the center of the page. I'm going to set the background color to the notification color that I already declared. I'm going to set the border radius to the radius variable. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden with a display of flex. And then I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. And I'm also going to add a gap of one REM. Next, I'm going to work on the individual elements within this notification pop-up. So first, I'm going to refer to the warning element, which is this element right here. And so beneath this, I'm going to say and warning. So for this element, I'm going to specify the width to 1.5 REM and a margin left to 1 REM. And I'm also going to set the fill to a dark color. So now we can see that styling applied. Next, I'm going to work on this close button. So beneath this, I'm going to say and close. And for this element, I'm going to specify the background color. I'm going to add some padding around it of one REM. I'm going to set the display of it to flex and the cursor to pointer. And then for the actual SVG within that, I'm going to set the width to one REM and the fill to a dark color. So now we can see this is starting to take shape. Next, I'm going to work on how we actually want this notification pop-up to appear on the screen. So I want this pop-up to animate downwards on the screen. So the way that I'm going to do that is by initially making the display of this none, and then I will apply an animation and change the display of it when I want it to appear. So beneath this, I'm going to add a class that is and-show, which will be the state that we will add when we want this notification to be visible on the page. And so when we add this class to the notification, I want it to first undergo an animation. So I'm going to write animation and I'm going to create a keyframe animation called warning and it will take place in 400 milliseconds with an ease in out curve. And then I'm also going to add forwards because I wanted to retain the last frame in the animation. And then I'm also going to set the display of it to flex because this is how I want it to appear when it's visible on the page. So up here originally under the notification class, I set the display of it to flex so that way we could actually see what we're doing. But I don't want this element to always be visible on the page. I only want it to be visible after the user taps on this button. So here I'm actually going to set the display of it to none, which will hide it from the page. So when this class of show is added to the document, that's when the display of it will change to flex and then it will be visible in the document. So beneath this, I'm going to create the keyframe animation of how I want it to appear on the page. So here I'm going to write at keyframes and then I'm going to reference that name called warning. And with keyframe animations, you specify how you want it to look at each step in the process. So at 0%, I'm going to set a few values and then at 5% and then at 100%. So at 0%, I want that opacity to be zero for this element and I want the top position of it to be zero. Then at 5%, I still want that opacity to be zero. 
while at 100%, I want that opacity to go to one and I want the top to be two REM. So that way from zero to 100%, the notification will move down and then from five to 100%, the opacity will change. So that way it will move and change opacity at the same time. So this is actually all of the CSS that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within JavaScript. So first within JavaScript, I like to declare variables for certain elements that I'm referencing from the HTML. So I'm going to add a variable for this delete button because I wanna pay attention to that. I'm adding a variable for the notification because I want to change its state on the page. And then I'm also going to add a variable for the close button that's within the notification so we can dismiss it. So next I'm just going to add some event listeners and link everything up. So first I'm going to add an event listener for this delete button. So I'm going to write delete button dot add event listener. And I'm going to pay attention for a click. And so when the user taps on this button, I want the notification to add the class of notification show. So within here, I'm going to add an arrow function and I'm going to say notification dot class list dot add. And I'm going to add the class of notification show. So now I expect that when I tap on this button, we will see the notification. So I tap on it and now the notification is visible. So the last thing I'm going to do is add an event listener for this close button. So that way we can actually dismiss this notification. So beneath this, I'm going to write close button dot add event listener. I'm going to pay attention for a click and then I will run the arrow function. And for this function, I'm going to remove the class of notification show. So here I'm writing notification dot class list dot remove. And then I'm removing that class. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this, we will see that notification and it appears. And if I click on the close button right here, it dismisses. So there you go. That's how I created this notification pop-up from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.